Right here today by our uh, Honorable District Attorney, John Flynn, uh, his Bureau Chief, John Gherkin. I think John's in the room somewhere, right? In the back. And uh, a Buffalo Police Commissioner, Joe Grimalia, and uh, Chief of Detectives from the Buffalo Police, Craig Macy, and the FBI SAC, Derek Cox, and uh, I think Clint Winters is here too, the ASAC, and Clint's in the back. So uh, I'm just going to kind of lay out the investigation for you uh, real quickly here. Approximately three and a half months ago, an investigation was undertaken by the Erie County Sheriff's Narcotics and Intelligence Unit, which is headed up by Chief Granville. During the three and a half months this investigation was underway, more than 22 kilos of cocaine were seized. This is roughly 48 and a half pounds of cocaine with a street value that likely exceeds $2 million. Last night, with the assistance of the Buffalo Police Intelligence Unit, the FBI Safe Streets Task Force, the District Attorney's Office, and the Erie County Sheriff's SWAT Team, this investigation culminated with the seizure of 14 kilos and the arrest of three individuals identified as 48-year-old Timothy Tucker of Inglewood, California, 23-year-old Chastity Banks of Los Angeles, California, and 19-year-old Luani Gatto Arona de Gui of Henderson, Nevada, which is near Las Vegas, Nevada. The cocaine was recovered pursuant to a search warrant that authorized the search of a vehicle that our detectives found equipped with hidden compartments, commonly referred to as traps. Uh, so to clarify, this investigation uh, started out with the seizure of two kilos, followed by the seizure of six kilos, and then last night, Wednesday, se I'm sorry, la Wednesday seizure of 14 additional kilos, bringing the sum total to 22. I want to commend the excellent work of the Erie County Sheriff's Narcotics Squad and SWAT team, as well as the Buffalo Police Department's Intel Unit, the DA's office, and the FBI. The DA's office was instrumental in assisting us in our pursuit of search warrants and court orders, and the FBI provided technical assistance, as well as the assistance with uh, the issuance of subpoenas. Investigators have learned that the origin of this contraband is Mexico, and this drug pipeline that they interrupted is part of a transnational criminal organization, also known as the Sinaloa Drug Cartel. This is evidence that the problems on the southern border have reached Erie County. And I think it's important to recognize that local drug dealers take this product and apply cutting agents to maximize their profits. These cutting agents often include fentanyl, which uh, obviously creates a, a lethal combination. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, District Attorney John Flynn. Well, I want to commend the uh, undersheriff uh, and his boss, uh, uh, Sheriff John Garcia. Uh, under Sheriff uh, uh, William Cooley, who we just heard from, uh, was uh, leading this uh, investigation, uh, and I can't thank the Sheriff's Department enough uh, for their great work. It's a common theme that we have at many of these press conferences where you see the Buffalo Police Department here, uh, Commissioner Gamalia, uh, along with uh, the FBI uh, here as well. Uh, and it is this cooperation and this teamwork uh, that leads us to getting these drugs off the street because what you see right here is a killer it is a killer especially when it is mixed with fentanyl and that is what we are seeing now not only in the city of buffalo and erie county but all across this state and across this nation we are seeing uh, more and more cocaine laced with fentanyl now I want to make it clear to everybody um, uh, that, you know, there's been a lot of talk over the years about, you know, we need to stop the war on drugs. We need to focus more on social services and, and helping those out who get caught up in the drug trade. While I agree with the second part of that premise from the extent that the individuals who are hooked on drugs and the individuals who have problems with drugs need to be helped. But that does not mean we are going to stop the war on drugs. So if anyone out there who thinks that we as a society or we here at Erie County are going to get rid of the war on drugs, you are sadly mistaken. Um, I, along with my partners, our partners behind me here, are going to fight the war on drugs tooth and nail. We are going to fight the individuals who are bringing this poison into our community. 
and that is what we have done. Uh, as uh, Under Sheriff Cooley mentioned, uh, three individuals uh, were arraigned yesterday morning uh, in front of Buffalo City Court Judge Kevin Kane. Uh, they were arraigned on one count of criminal possession of controlled substance of first degree, that is a A1 felony, along with one count of criminal possession of controlled substance of third degree, that is a B felony. Now, these individuals um, were remanded. And again, you know, I know that I am a critic of bail reform, uh, which I am, obviously, uh, but this was one of the recent changes that was made in our bail laws. Uh, A1 felony drug charges initially under the initial bail reform, believe it or not, was a non-bailable offense. So these individuals back in 2020, 2021, when bail reform started, they were walking out and they were going back to California, Nevada. Now, we obviously, all of us, complained about that and to their credit, the legislature changed it to where now this offense is a bailable offense and the judge, properly so, remanded them. Uh, and so that was, again, one of the good changes to bail reform. Uh, we need a lot more, but that's how all of us here in law enforcement can um, make an impact on Albany and get some common sense changes made because think about it. This right here, these individuals who are now charged, while innocent until proven guilty, they would have been walking out the door of Buffalo City Court and heading back to California and God knows where from there if the changes, the sensible change, wasn't made to bail reform. Uh, and again, uh, I want to applaud Albany for that because I criticize them on a daily basis. Um, and when they do something right, I want to give them credit. Uh, and this, obviously, I give them a lot of credit for. Um, so again, I, I can't thank the, uh, the FBI enough, uh, our federal partners, uh, the Erie County Sheriff. Thank you all. Uh, first and foremost, I want to commend the work of all the investigators who put all the legwork, all the time, all the effort. That includes all law, sworn law enforcement, the district attorney's office, everybody that was out there doing the work to put on this table what you see here. What you see on the table, it goes further, it goes beyond this. This seizure saved lives. It saved lives from overdoses and it saved lives from shooting victims from the gang war that would have led to further shootings that impacts the city of Buffalo and it takes it even beyond that. So this has a wide reaching uh, impact on what happens right here in the city of Buffalo and that's because of the dedicated hard work by the investigators that worked on this case. I want to thank all the partners up here. We uh, stand before you on, on uh, several occasions and we talk about the partnership, we talk about the bond that we have, we talk about the great working relationship. It's not rhetoric. This is actual good solid working relationships among all the agencies. It's a cooperative effort. Nobody takes the lead. Nobody you know, steps in and says, this is mine. As soon as we get on top of something, whichever agency it is, we're calling the other agencies and we're doing this collaboratively. That's how we get things done. So thank you to everybody behind me and thank you to all the investigators. A lot that you don't see, they stay out of sight and uh, they're out there already working the next case. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, I'm Darren Cox, and the acting special agent in charge of the FBI. Um, I'd like to thank all of our partners up here, congratulate the investigators on this great investigation. Um, this, these arrests and the drug sh seizures show the commitment of the FBI Safe Streets Task Force, the Erie County Sheriff's Office, Buffalo Police Department, and the Erie County um, District Attorney's Office to work together in removing drugs from the community. Um, as a top priority of all of the groups up here, um, we are targeting, we are disrupting and dismantling violent criminal organizations which frequently traffic narcotics like these, cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl in the area. Um, our partnership is the key to that success and everyone up here every day is working diligently and very, very hard to make sure that we take these narcotics off the street, the violent offenders off the street, 
and, and make the community safer for everyone in the Buffalo and the Erie County um, area. So again, I'd just like to congratulate the investigators. Thank you all for your hard work and, um, and the partnership. Thank you. Thanks everyone for your perspective on this case. Are there any, uh, any questions? Yeah, you mentioned the cartel, the Sinaloa cartel. Can you explain the connection there? Uh, I can't get into detail on it, but uh, investigators were led to believe that uh, you know the genesis of this contraband uh, started south of the border. Okay, so Mexico, but it, is there definitely a cartel connection? There appears to be a cartel connection. And is there, you know, there was that big, the, the crazy sea cucumber case that from a few years ago, is there any kind of connection to that? I, I don't have any comment on that. Okay, and then finally, if the, the, the substances here, have they been tested, is it, is it cocaine? Is it mixed with fentanyl? Do you know yet? Yes, uh, it, it, some of the uh, the products been tested, and it's uh, it's cocaine. It's just it's cocaine. So it hasn't been. You, know, you were talking about the fentanyl mix, but it's that that had, hadn't happened yet. That would maybe be the next step. Yeah, qu quite often the uh, you know where the uh, cut agent gets applied, it's uh, it's after the fact that the uh, the lower level dealers, for that matter. Are you finding more drugs, more illegal drugs? coming over the border from Mexico and ending up here. Yep. Uh, Chief Bramble, you have any comments? <clears throat> Just quickly, I, I, I think um, a lot of what we're seeing is coming from that from that direction. I don't want to comment any further just to, in order to jeopardize you know, future investigations. I will say that uh, a part of this was tested. It proved positive for the presence of cocaine by the, the CPS lab. Um, there's more testing to come. Well, what, what's the appeal? to Western New York? Or are there piles of like this stuff in major, mid to major cities all across North America? Well, I, I think that just goes to show you what our communities are faced with on a daily basis, not just here in Buffalo, but Erie County as a whole. Um, this is a problem, we're trying to address it. And I'll piggyback on all the comments. This, this is a cooperative effort without the relationship that we all have, this doesn't get done. Um, furthermore, I'd like to kind of give a, a little bit of an applause to, to Sheriff John Garcia and under Sheriff Cooley. These are guys that, that have done this job, that have been out there along with Commissioner Joe Camalia and, and Darren Cox and, and everybody else. This is, these are guys that have done this, they were boots on the ground. So those conversations and, and, and integral parts of the investigation, when we're talking about that, it's, it's, it's good to have them in the room because they've done it. So it's, it's proved out with this arrest here. There, there was an organized effort to get those drugs here. So that means there was an, or, was there an organized effort to receive them? Because it was obviously going, to, the destination was here at Buffalo to be delivered to the streets. Is there an organization, gang, or just any group, organized group here that was set to receive the, those, the drugs? Yeah, th this investigation is far from over. Um, we do expect some local arrest in the near future. Um, but again, we'll have no more comment on that. Where were the suspects operating out of homes, businesses, and, and ultimately, where were the arrests made? The arrests were made in the city of Buffalo at a, at a uh, single family residence that was utilized as an Airbnb. And they were just distributing or holding it there? Uh, at the time of the search warrant, I will say this, they were dismantling the vehicle uh, to retrieve the narcotics from the vehicle. Can you talk about where in the vehicle? Or? Uh, I'd rather not. It was it was very sophisticated. Okay. Uh, but can the, you explain the whole like the car was coming? Wait. The car the car drove uh, here from from what we know uh, came in from California. Um, it arrived here a couple of days ago. Um, that's when kind of our surveillance started, and then it ultimately ended up in a garage at a home <clears throat> in the city of Buffalo. And again, it was being dismantled. And at that time, our, our SWAT team made entry into the residence and uh, we're able to make some arrests. So, of course, they're accused of possessing it. Are they accused of distributing or intent to distribute? Yeah, what, well, one of the charges uh, has with it an intent to distribute element to it. Yep. Can you talk about that specific change to the bail law? When did that happen? To I believe it happened in 2022, but it might have happened a year before in 2021. I, I can get back to you, Jeff, on that for sure. But it came after the original um, passing in 2020. That specific charges, they're accused of. A, A1, 
The only drug charge initially that was under bail reform was a major drug trafficking charge. Any other charge below the major trafficking charge um, was a non-qualifying offense. And so if you recall a few years ago, there was a major drug bust in New York City that was uh, just an A1 level offense, uh, and there was an outrage in New York City about that being a non-qualifying offense. Um, so they, they righted that ship. So does this qualify as yes. a major drug trafficking No, well, they, they, no, no. At this time, at this time that, that major trafficking is an actual penal law violation, all right? Uh, he has not been charged with that, uh, uh, none of them, at this time. Um, that charge, though, is under investigation. And as you know, once things get into the grand jury phase, charges sometimes get upgraded, sometimes get lowered, they stay the same. So th as uh, uh, Detective Granville stated, uh, th this, um, this investigation is still ongoing. So this is like first degree. Th this is this, correct. This is this is this is um, uh, uh, criminal possession in the first degree, okay. and then it was a third degree charge as well. Okay. It's yeah. incredible the journey from California here and how that goes under the radar in, in a very sophisticated vehicle. I mean, how does that happen? That a car can make it yeah. I mean, of drugs <clears throat> from California to Buffalo, and obviously you guys did incredible work to find out that you were tipped off or somehow were able to. But how does the car go from California to Buffalo under the radar like that? Kevin, if you think about it, I mean, just think of the, the thousands and thousands of cars that travel our highways every day. I mean, up, up 95 going north and south, coming across 90 east and west. I mean, you have, you have millions of vehicles that travel the highways uh, of our country uh, on a yearly basis. And so, you know, again, it, it's not that easy. Uh, you, you, need, you need good old-fashioned police work. This is what all these guys behind me do um, every day. So yeah, it's not, it, it's, it's not that difficult to, to, to transport drugs uh, uh, via cars. Uh, and so you, you need to have uh, boots on the ground and good intelligence and, and good old-fashioned police work to catch them. And you know, to piggyback on, the, on your question, I mean, you know, th yeah, this is, this is happening all across the country. I mean, you know, as a, you know, as a president of the National DA Association, I get to travel across the country and talk to DAs across the country, and this is happening all over the United States. The, 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 the borders are a problem for illegal drugs, uh, especially the Mexican border. Uh, and while we here in Buffalo, you know, see it on TV that. We have problems in, 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 in there's problems in Texas, there's problems in, in New Mexico with our border. Um, it doesn't affect us. Well, that's just not true. This is here in Buffalo, New York. So the problems that we have in our borders uh, affects us in Buffalo, New York. You said the property was being used as an Airbnb. What, what do we know about who owns that property? Was it a local citizen? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that because that, that's part of the evidence and investigation. What other issues are you seeing as a result of the migrant surge? The, the, the main issue is the cutting with fentanyl. That, that, is, that, that, is, that is the biggest problem that we are seeing. Okay? This right here, um, if it got down to the street level dealer, all right, is going to be cut with fentanyl along with other stuff as well, okay, to, to make it more profitable. But when it, when it gets cut with fentanyl um, and a user doesn't know that and snorts that thinking it's just pure cocaine, that can kill you. Um, and we've seen that not only here in Buffalo, but we see that all across the country. That is our biggest fear, um, is that when that gets cut with fentanyl, it literally kills people. And as Commissioner Gamalia said, the other consequences are is that this is worth a lot of money. Uh, and individuals who sell this want to protect their turf and protect their money. And when that happens, shootings happen and violence happens. So it's not, uh, it, it's not being over the top here and saying that every one of these men behind me and my DA, uh, ADA John Gherkin, literally save lives. Have you come across that Airbnb issue before as it being an easy way for criminals to do stuff there? 
this is the first I've heard of that. Um, but uh, you know, again, uh, you know, I in individuals who um, deal at this level right here are smart and sophisticated. Is it safe to assume there's a sophisticated car full of fentanyl somewhere out there? It's, pro it's safe to assume that, yes, absolutely. It's, sa it's safe to assume that unfortunately there is illegal fentanyl all over this country uh, and all over the streets of every major city in this country and even the rural areas of this country. Uh, fentanyl um, has killed uh, millions of people in the past 20 years. Um, we had, uh, you know, here in Erie County, we had an overdose, you know, it hit its peak around 2016. Uh, it started to go down again uh, pre-COVID, but then, um, I, as I said before, one of the unfortunate aspects of COVID that really didn't get talked about that much because obviously the COVID deaths took the, the media's attention, but the overdoses went up during COVID in 2020, 2021, uh, and in 2022, um, we start, you know, they started going back up again. And so uh, that is one of the silent killers of the COVID area is that the fentanyl overdose, not only here, here in Erie County, but across the country, uh, started going back up again. Obviously, that's a very large amount of cocaine, but how unusual is it to, to for a seizure like that? Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, I'll just say, that, you know, and I think I speak for everybody up here, this isn't easy to do. Um, it, 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 you, you have criminals out there that are trying to go undetected. They're very sophisticated. They're very surveillance conscious. So we, we have to kind of, as a group, put our heads together and figure this stuff out. This is this is hard to do. You know, half that of that's much. half of that's hard to do. So it, it's um, it just goes to show you the dedication uh, of our sheriff, our DA, our police commissioner. Uh, <clears throat> and the FBI and, and trying to save lives and, and take the bad guys off the street. Were they armed? No. Are they American? How much citizens? does that stuff weigh? How much does each one of those bundles weigh? Each kilo here, it's about 2.2 .2 pounds. And I see that, that is it wrapped some kind of special wrapping on there or something? Yeah. Yes. If I heard correctly, it's been a three and a half month investigation where each time there's been maybe traces of cocaine. I mean, how helpful is that in an investigation like this when you can grab just small traces of it and then it eventually leads to a larger seizure such as this? Very. I mean, that, that, that's what it's all about. We call these ladder investigations. We start at the bottom and work our way up to the top, and that, that proves itself out here. Sorry. And we're done, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're good.